Hello, and welcome to the final episode in our series on the F1 power unit. Today, we'll be talking about the energy store. The energy store is really just a posh term for a battery. Our energy store is made up of a string of cells all linked together with a positive terminal at one end and a negative terminal at the other end, just like any other battery. Like the control electronics above it, the driver is allowed two energy stores per season. And like all the other power unit elements, if you use more than your allocation, you have to take a grid penalty. The energy store is contained within our ERS module. If you remember, the control electronics are at the top and the energy store is at the bottom. The engine half of the power unit is connected to the back of the chassis. So you can imagine this ERS module, which is in the correct position relative to the engine, is going to be sat underneath the driver. The energy store is part of the ERS system. It's where any excess energy created by the MGUH or MGUK is stored, and then the energy is supplied back to the MGUs so that they can power either the turbocharger or the engine in total. By regulation, the minimum mass for the energy store is 20 kilograms. Since we started work on this power unit's energy store in around 2012, we've increased the efficiency of the energy store by around about 15 percentage points, whilst at the same time reducing the mass by about 20%. Each time the car brakes to go around the corner, approximately the same amount of energy gets stored in the energy store as it would take to boil four kettles. Over the course of a race, the amount of energy that is put into the energy store is approximately the same amount that a reasonable sized house would use over the course of 24 hours. The biggest difference is that the F1 energy store is very power dense. We must be able to both absorb and give back the energy at a very, very high rate. But it's not very energy dense because over the course of a lap, the amount of energy that goes in is about the same as it goes out. So different to a road car where you're slowly using up that energy over the range that you're driving. In general, the energy store in your F1 power unit is both lighter and smaller than what you find in your Mercedes EQ electric car or AMG hybrid. For us, we have that same challenge with the energy store, especially when you consider the high powers that we're dealing with. In order to cool the energy store, we use a special product. We use Petronas Tutela, and that is a fluid that has been developed specifically for use in this power electronics and energy store module to cool all the components within it. If we didn't control the temperatures in the ERS module, there is a possibility that it would overheat. And like all lithium ion batteries, if you overheat, you can have a big problem and it can become very dangerous. As well as supplying the electrical energy to the power unit, the energy store also supplies all the electrical energy needed by the chassis. So without it, not only would the power unit not work, nor would any of the systems on the car. Through careful management of how we use each and every cell within the energy store, how we condition it, how we look after the temperature of it, the capacity of those cells barely changes over the course of a season. That concludes our series on the F1 power unit and the elements within it. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. If you have got any questions, pop them in the comments. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.